Welcome to Dungeon Discourse, the show where we talk about our D&D show every every week. Hey guys, welcome in, Raiders. Ethan, how was your stream? Anyone got a cake every fork? Ish. <laughs> a lot of cake forks, unfortunately. Mm. Welcome in, gamers. Appreciate you. Uh, today on Discourse, we have Laura and Belle. We're going to talk about last campaign. We're going to do some other stuff. We're just going to be nerds for like an hour or so and uh, uh, talk about some shit. We're also still raising money for charity. Yes. I see more charity in the chat. Yes, up until November 15th, we'll be raising money for special effect. Great cause. Uh, I'm sure Ethan has talked about them a lot during his stream. Yep. What they do is they make games more accessible for people with disabilities that aren't able to play video games like, you know, you and I, with mm. because of whatever disability they may have. Um, In Ethan's exact words when talking about the incentives we had, because if we hit 500, I have to play Mortuary Assistant. He's like, that game made Dutch scream like a girl, so I'm sure dude, you'll love it. Dude, it's, <laughs> it, the Mortuary, it's good. It's really good. It's really I've good. heard good things, but I'm terrified. It's it's not super long. Basically, the way you do it is like there's five that's endings, part of why I and you just it. play the games to get five endings, and that's it. Um, Lol, no, uh, I'm getting one ending, then I'm done. But it's, <laughs> uh, well, then you're noping. Literally, that's literally half an hour. <laughs> so okay, then maybe I'll get a few endings, maybe. <laughs> but um, great cause. We're raising money for them uh, all throughout uh, up until normal. I would say all, normally it's a whole month thing, like in one month. So I could say like, oh, I'll start October. But now it's like we started halfway through October, and we're gonna end. Halfway through uh, November. But uh, yeah, 30 days of, of fundraising. A lot of incentives coming up as soon as we hit the 500 pound mark. So if you have some spare change, how about instead of getting the takeaway tonight, just donate some money to charity, man. You have food in the pantry. You can cook. Like, who's, <laughs> who, are you, who are you fucking kidding? Come on. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll keep an eye on the Tiltify in case we get donations because this, this overly doesn't get, get the alert because of obvious yeah. aesthetic reasons. But uh, I'll keep an eye on the Tiltify. Um, dude, episode thirty-three and no Duke. True, actually, actually true. Yeah, we fucked up on that one. That was a. I dude, Bell fucking a caught a mistake. Sense. Apparently, I I fucked up with the counting of uh, Discord episodes. So it's not even episode thirty-three then. No, no, it is. No, oh, it, it is now. We got it right. It is now. Okay. This would have been episode if... thirty-two, I guess, because I counted yeah. episode twenty-six twice. Oh, okay, so that's my bad. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we're here. Any announcements before we'd like to start? Looking at Laura, um, mainly, because Laura is the announcement yeah. uh, queen of yeah. Dungeons Well, other than Charity <laughs> Select, um, this Saturday, my D&D campaign finally comes back, where Dutch gets to be a player, and I take DM chair. Uh, we've had, like, a two-month unintentional hiatus, because D&D life, that's just how it goes, you I know? I get to play Russian Shit happens. Yeah, yeah, but we're playing D&D on my channel this Saturday. Uh, call the Nether Deep campaign. We're only, it's only gonna be our fifth episode. Uh, half the episodes, two of the episodes are only like two hours long and they're on YouTube. So if you haven't watched the campaign yet, you got lots of time to catch up. We're not very far in. It's real simple. True. So join us and on Saturday. not only we're playing this week, we're playing the week after as well, right? We are. We're doing, we're doing two to make up for two months of missing D&D, we're doing the generosity. And one of them's going to be a Halloween episode, not in content because it's a pre-written campaign and I can't really <laughs> do that. But in <laughs> costumes, we're going to be dressed up. Some of us will. I'll put my maid outfit on. Fuck it, you know. Send it. <laughs> yeah. Send it. The only issue was last time I put it on, I needed Koiba's help to take it off because it's very tight. <laughs> Who knew that like clothing you... made for women is very, <laughs> very spacious around the bosom, but very tight around the not. shoulders. Yeah. Who knew? So I, I kind of kind of fucked up on that one. No, like it's a, it's a it's like a skirt type vibe. Yeah. I said the hips don't really matter, but it, like a lot of space <laughs> here, not so much here. You know. Ooh, idea. <laughs> if we hit, if we hit like a certain goal during that stream, we add an incentive where Dutch tears his way out of the maid no, outfit at the end of the session. No, also have a fucking incentive. Like if he raises it in mind, they'll do another maid stream oh. on, my, on my channel. Okay, so. then never mind. No, we can't tear the outfit. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll Unless see. one we'll reward see. is higher than the other one. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like, like 2K or some shit, something stupid. Yeah. Um, But yeah, anything else? I don't think so. No. Yeah. Very good, um, very nice. And yeah, regular Dungeon Select will be Sunday. I won't be yep. there because I have family True. shit, but everyone else will. So And the week after will technically be our Halloween special type vibe. We're not going to do a Halloween one shot, but I'm just going to see if I can incorporate some Halloween stuff. And some of us will also still be dressed up. I'm go. getting money out of my Halloween costume, man. I'm going to wear it as much as I can. Nice. <laughs> I'm actually tempted to commit to my joke of like, I'm going to dress up like Ethan. Just get like some, you do of, it, do like, it. some just get one of those like oh, fake that's tattoo what, sleeves. Criti Critical and, Role did that last year. Their Halloween was they dressed as other cast be, put members. Put it be neon, get and a fake beard, and I'll be good to go pretty much, right? 
Yep. That'd be really fun. I mean, whoever gets me, it's easy. Just go buy some obnoxious wig that's a non-human hair color, and you're good. Obnoxious wig. And just, yeah. I mean, <laughs> whoever needs to dress up as Belle is in trouble because they need to buy a wheelchair. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, uh... <laughs> these are expensive. Definitely oh, mine. Fuck. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all I do is wear a sling for the session and just because oh, they, they've dislocated just, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you really wanna, if you really want to commit to the bitch, just fucking get like two doses of morphine in you before we start. Oh! <laughs> At least two, man. At least. At least. Two. At least. Uh, anyway, uh, last we left off in Dungeon Select, uh, the party made it to uh, the island. The Uncharted Islands that has uh, uh, that houses the lair in which Evandur High Castle, the chosen undead captain of Umberly, uh, resides and protects Umberly's trident. The party had already made a plan with the people uh, of Boldsville, a little self-made settlement made of a shipwreck uh, and uh, inhabited by the crew of a ship called the Bold Venture. Uh, to, to how to get them inside the prison. Uh, basically, the way they did it was they uh, alerted uh, the scouts that they were there. They got arrested, shackled up, and they got brought into their lair. And then they had to do a little prison break. And uh, now they're exploring the lair, figuring out piece by piece, figuring out what's really going on. Um, most interestingly enough, uh, they found a letter, uh, because Umberly is known as the Bitch Queen, but they found a letter talking about some kind of king, which, um... The bitch king! The bitch king, which, mm. uh, is an interesting, uh, thing that will be revealed properly next week, I, or this week, I'm assuming. Um, <clears throat> they also have to find Umberly's trident, but they figured out, due to locate object, the trident is split into three pieces, spread among the dungeon. Um, but uh, they found one piece, two to go. So, uh, that'll be a, a good session uh, this Sunday, I think, just some more dungeon delving. Um, other than that, that's the recap, I think. That's pretty much, yeah, that, that encompasses what we did last time, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, I feel like it was pretty good. It's pretty decent. Um, yeah. Looking forward to next session. Next session is going to be gonna be a banger. I know what I'm mad about that. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's, just this, it's, it's purely October's fucking brutal because October's Canadian Thanksgiving and between James's family and my very broken divorced family that don't speak to each other, we have to do a bunch of separate family gatherings because no one can be in the same room. So all my weekends in October get fucked. So that's why I'm out here. Hey, you know what that sounds like to me? Bullshit. The, the backstory <laughs> to like half of the created D&D characters ever made, so, yeah. Um, well, because Canadian and American Thanksgiving are different, Ethan. I have to specify. Any Americans like, it's not Thanksgiving yet. It's Canadian Thanksgiving, because Americans in November, true. and Canadians do it in October. Oh, is, okay? that, is that a Carly right there? Is that, is that, is that, a, is that a Wild Dobbs? Oh. Hold on a second. Hold on a minute. Uh, welcome in, gamers. Uh, if you're new around here, we are Dungeon Select. We play D&D &D every Sunday. We talk about it every Thursday, and we play Divinity on Mondays. Um, nerdy dnd slash rpg content if that's what you like then hit the follow button you know it's just and it's out there it's free follows are free guys if you haven't followed yet just hit that button it's literally free what are you fucking doing um anyway normally we start the show off with a segment called dnd speed of the week but with one dnd stuff being revealed and and, and actual like classes and reworks and stuff we're going to take a look at that instead this week last week we looked at the reworked bard this week, we're going to look at the Ranger. Uh, so I have the one D&D All version. the more reason it's extra spicy that Duke is not here. True. <laughs> I mean, Duke was, here the for the, Duke was here for the bar chat, I'm pretty sure. Was Duke here last week? Am I crazy? It was Duke, right? Pretty sure? Uh, no? Yes? Yeah. Pretty me. sure it was Duke. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we talked about the Bard, which, you know, Duke played, uh, played Bard in, in Campaign 1. I, I'm pretty sure it was Duke. I might be... Were you here when we talked about last week, Duke, when we talked about the bar changes and all that stuff? Or am I crazy? Am I misremembering? I feel like it was with you. But we also talked a lot about it off stream, so maybe that's why I'm kind of... It was Craig, Craig and Jane, never mind. I guess yeah. I talked um, I talked to Duke about it like off stream, so I guess that's why I'm getting mixed up. It was Quake and OSG. My bad. Um, Quake. Yeah, we talked about it on Twitter and stuff. Yeah, it's true. Ah, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so the Ranger class. Uh, before we get into the Ranger specifically, some changes they made uh, to all classes is 
what I get from 1D&D &D in general is that they made it a lot more noob friendly. Uh, and I say that because they, they've they outlined four different class groupings, uh, experts, mages, priests, and warriors with characteristics of like how they're, you know, what they're supposed to be like. So we have the experts, yeah. which is bard, ranger, rogue, uh, which is polymaths who have expertise uh, and elements of other classes. They have mages, which are sorcerer, warlock, wizards, uh, adepts of arcane magic, focusing on utility and destruction. They have priests, which is cleric, druid, paladin, uh, sewers of divine and primal magic, focusing well, on healing. Interesting, that's where druid went. Yeah, focusing but I see on healing, it. utility, and yeah. defense. And then warriors, barbarian, fighter, monk. You know, uh, speak, it speaks for itself. Uh, which I guess the, the reason I'm saying it's more new friendly is because if people are new and they're like, they give, basically give people a handle of like, oh, if you're going to be a druid, this is kind of what your class is about. And this is kind of what you should be focusing on. To kind of just simplify it, they also added in some rules regarding... Uh, they, 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 for spellcasters, they now come with like, oh, you leveled up? Here's suggested spells for you to take this level. Stuff like that. So they really kind of give new players, especially, help the babies. a lot of, a lot of handles to kind of look at and grasp from. Um, yeah, oh, we, oh, you're level 10 now? Well, we su suggest that you take these spells now. Uh, stuff like that. Um, but they also reworked all the classes. So we're going to look at the ranger today. Uh, and I have the 1D&D &D and the 5E Ranger, just base 5E Ranger side by side. I'm just going to go level by level and look at it. One other big thing they changed is that uh, what previously was the level 20 uh, thing classes got has now been moved to level 18. And at level 20, they get something Ooh. called an Epic Boon. And we've gone through some of the boons before. Epic Boons are basically feats on crack. Um, yeah. It basically, it gives... You, it gives you some epic like stat increases or or oh you can use the spell for free now forever lol or you can now do this epic thing Imagine. once per long or short rest it's just it's just a, an extra feat essentially but a little better um <clears throat> so uh rangers i mean the starting equipment blah blah is all pretty much the same i feel like um level one they gain expertise where they previously would have gained favorite enemy and natural explorer so I don't know if they, uh, they still, no, never mind. Level one, they still gain favorite enemy, but they got rid of what previously was known as natural explorer uh, at, at first level. But expertise just gives them expertise into skill proficiency of your choice. I don't think Ranger had expertise at all uh, uh, previously. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Rangers never had expertise. Whereas uh, I think Rogues definitely had expertise, but I feel like Ranger never had it. Um, so it just gives you two proficient or two double proficiencies for a skill that you want to be really good at. It speaks for itself. Uh, and they, and again, why I'm saying a little more new friendly. Oh, stealth and survival are iconic choices for a ranger. They give you a lot of like suggestions and things of like, oh, this is what you should pick, or this is what popular pick is. Uh, is there a difference in favorite enemy? Da -da -da -da. Favorite enemy now ha makes it so that uh, rangers always have the hunter's mark spell prepared. Rangers, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> hold on a second. No, Did they make it so that Rangers, because normally Rangers don't have to prepare spells, right? It's just, I've learned this, this is what I know. Yeah. But now they can, same with Bard, they changed that as well. So now Rangers can also just, every long rest, swap out their spell list. Hmm, interesting. So that makes them a little Very more useful. versatile. Same with Bards. Yeah, that Bards in general always, makes any, uh, any class just way yeah. more useful because you can make your your toolkit basically situational and specific yeah yeah so they did the same thing with bard bard previously uh were just like oh i leveled up i know these spells uh the only way to change swap out spells is when you level up you can swap out like one spell for another or some shit now it's just every night you can just long rest and boom go over your uh uh over whatever your, spells uh, yeah. yeah whatever but they always have the hunter's march spell prepared with favorite enemy uh, and it doesn't count against the number of spells you can prepare. Uh, not concentration. And it's no longer concentration. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. So that's it pretty fucking good. That's a good fucking change. So it instead lasts of, for its full duration until you end it as a bonus action. Yeah, so... And, like, I guess it replaces the whole you have advantage on wisdom, survival checks to track your favorite enemies, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so it's no more you know a lot about these enemies and have advantage on checks regarding your knowledge of them or tracking them. 
Now it's just, here's Hunter's Mark forever, and you don't have to concentrate on it. Smile. So I guess a little more combat tuned instead of overall tr tracking roleplay tuned, I guess. Which, mm. yeah. Combat-wise, it's huge, right? Like, don't get me wrong. Combat-wise, is a huge change, but I feel like... I feel like there's a lot of flavor to the whole favorite enemy thing that they kind of got rid of. Because usually mm. the favorite enemy, yeah. most people I know, the played or ranger, the favorite enemy was a heavy tie into their backstory or whatever it was. Yeah. Which you still can do, but uh, as written, it no longer. Does Davian, what, do we know what Davian's favorite enemy is? Well, I don't think we do. I, I don't think, think Davian it's uses the uh, Tasha's rule where instead of favorite enemy, he can just on the fly be like, oh, you're my favorite enemy now. Oh, right, right. He's done that before. Yes. So, uh, yeah, and it gives him like bonus damage. Yeah, because Tasha's. Um, yeah, so Tasha's yeah. already kind of fucked with that and replaced that. But as I'm just going off of core, like, this is what the yeah. Ranger was core 5e. This is what the Ranger's going to be core 1D&D. &D. That's the comparison I'm making. Davian just gets a magical, hey, fuck you in particular. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, so spellcasting is now prepared instead of... Um, I learned this smile, which is pretty fucking, pretty fucking huge. Um, <laughs> it's about it. Second level, Rangers... Oh! And another little change. Uh, Rangers normally didn't get spellcasting until level 2, but now they get it at level 1. So that's also pretty huge. Um, fighting style, which I think is the same. They get to pick uh, what fighting style they want. Uh, mm. Not much change there. Uh, pretty much the same thing. At third level, they get their subclass, which is also... Uh, the same. Uh, I think there's one subclass in this document that they go into. Yeah, they go into the Hunter subclass, which I guess we'll also look at. Because uh, for Bard, they did the College of Lore. So we'll just we'll go through that as well. Um, subclass, yeah, fucking who cares? Uh, level 4 is a feat or a stat improvement. Yep, 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 yep. Level 5, extra attack. Also the same. Uh, level 6 would normally be a favorite enemy and natural explorer improvement. And at level 7, they would normally get their uh, subclass feature. But now at level 6, rangers get their first, uh, their, their, their next subclass uh, feature. And at level 7, they get something called roving, which I think is new. Yeah, that doesn't sound familiar. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, so at level 7, rangers' speed increases by 10 feet while not wearing heavy armor. And they now also have a climb and swim speed equal to your normal speed. So that makes them a lot more more adept at whatever terrain so they're So far, on. it just sounds like 1D&D &D Ranger was made with a lot more of, like, the game in mind, whereas the 5E base Ranger was made, mm -hmm. like, based off of archetype characters, like, flavors. Yeah. Like, this is clearly your Legolas, your whatever, like, yeah. your, your, your quintessential fantasy archer, but then not really thought about mechanically how does that translate to the game they made. It was like yeah. all flavor and not a lot of utility. This one now, it's yeah. like they've, they've made a lot more utility baked into there. This is the Tasha's optional class. Oh, and apparently this is already a, a Tasha's optional class feature you can pick from. So they just decided to yoink that and put it in the core. To make it, it's like, this on. is a really good feature. It's permanent yeah. now. <laughs> Roving set out of Tasha's. Well, they liked it so much that they were like, fuck it. We're, we're taking that and putting it in. There's a lot of good shit in Tasha's. Tasha's one of my Dude, favorite Tash, yeah, Tasha's books has, uh, that they've ever made. Has added so much good shit to a lot of classes. It's nutty. Uh, level 8, they get a feat, which is... Or a feat slash character set improvement. Um, at level 8, Rangers also got, like, back in back in 5e, Land Stride, which makes it so that they could move through non-magical difficult terrain uh, with no extra movement. They can pass through non-magical plants without being slowed. Um, so basically, magic also doesn't fuck with your shit when you're trying to go, through, go to places. Um... Mm. And they would also get advantage on saving throws against plants that are magically created or manipulated to impede movement, such as Entangle, that sort of thing. Um, do they just straight up not get that? But I guess roving kind of sort of already... It does it, but like only to an extent. Huh? Like, like roving kind of does it, but yeah, just... Yeah, kind of, but not entirely, but yeah. Yeah. Like they kind of... Yeah. They get extra speed so that going to difficult terrain isn't as harmful to them as it is to the rest. So, like, they kind of get rid of it, but not really. Uh, at level, one, level 9, Rangers previously got fuck all. But now they get another expertise. So, two more skills where they want to be really fucking really good at. Um, which is pretty fucking basic. 
Uh, level 10, Old Ranger got Natural Explorer Improvement and Hide in Plain Sight. And now, at level 10, Rangers get another subclass feature. So that's also different. Mm. Uh, hide in Plain Sight is pretty cool, because it basically makes it so that Rangers can just take a minute and camouflage themselves and blend in with, with their environment. Um, that, which gives them a plus 10 bonus to stealth checks uh, if they're not moving or taking actions. Um, which just they just don't get in one D and D, um, which is fair. Let's see, normally eleventh level rangers got another archetype feature, but now they get that at tenth. Instead, at level eleven, rangers now get tireless. Primal forces now help fuel on your journeys, granting you the uh, granting you the following benefits: they get temporary hit points whenever they finish a short or long rest. Equal to 1d8 plus your proficiency bonus. And they can get rid of exhaustion points after a short rest instead of a long rest. That's pretty fucking... That's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, okay. Here we go. Level 12 to get a feat or a stat improvement. At level 13, Nature's Veil. You invoke spirits of nature to magically hide yourself from view. Uh, cost a spell slot to become invisible, which I guess is kind of their way of still giving them that camouflage thing, but just... Make it a little more basic. Oh, bonus action, invisibility spell. Cost a spell slot. I like the flavor of the camouflage more, but... This kind of serves the same purpose. Instead of the plus 10 bonus, you just get advantage on stealth checks, right? So Yeah. Again, overall, so far, I feel like they got rid of a lot of the flavor and just added more, like... Utility. Utility, yeah. Which, I guess, is what the, ex the expert class group is about. So, mm. advance is mechanically equal to plus five. Oh, there you go. What is the normal level 13 thing? Oh, normally they got nothing at level 13. So have they made it so that instead of having levels where you get fuck all, you just get something at every level now? Seems like it. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Level 14 subclass feature wherein core d and D or 5e, they would get favorite enemy improvement and vanish. But is vanish... Oh, they could, they could hide on a, as a bonus action instead of an action. Okay. Um, level 15, you get Feral Senses. Gives them blind sight. Pretty good. Blind sight's always very useful. It's pretty, it's pretty <laughs> it will good. never not be useful. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> this is, okay, cool. Um... Whereas normally they would get an archetype feature, but they now get that at level 14 instead. Mm. So there you go. Level 16 is the usual feat slash stat improvement. At level 17, they get nothing, which is the same as in 5e. And then at level 18, they get Foe Slayer, which, usually, which previously was the level 20 thing Rangers got. Yeah. Uh, which uh, Hunter's Mark now deals an extra 1d10 damage to its target, rather than an extra d6. What was Foe Slayer back in the day? Because I feel like Foe Slayer used to be something else. Am I crazy? Am I crazy? I am terrible with knowledge of feats because I almost never take feats. I'm the I'm the girl who always takes the stat upgrade, so I Foe know Slayer nothing. used to uh, combine with favorite enemy, where they could add wisdom modifier on attack rolls or damage rolls uh, that you made against your favorite enemies. But I guess with favorite enemies not really being a thing anymore like that. Yeah. They just made it so that you're. Uh, Hunter's Mark is just better now. Smile. Which, with the beginning, like, Hunter's Mark has already improved, and now it just deals more damage as well. That's pretty fucking sick. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Uh, okay. Level 19, again, another feat, which I'm pretty sure level 19 for normal Ranger in 5e was the same thing. Now at level 20, they get an epic boon. I went through the list of epic boons already, and I'll quickly go through them, but it's basically just it's a an really extra big feat. list. It's or pretty they, big, is it yeah. short because they're... Oh, damn. It's pretty big. So there's the boon of combat prowess, which is just when you miss a melee weapon attack, you can just choose to hit instead. Once per short Jesus. rest. Boon oh, of once. Dimensional... I thought you meant it's all the time. No, like, no, no every short rest. Uh, <laughs> boon of dimensional travel. You can just cast a Misty Step spell once per short rest for free as an action. Uh, boon of fortitude. Your hit point maximum increases by 40. Uh, boon of high magic. If you have access to a ninth level spell slot, you just get a second ninth level spell slot, which is Ooh. insane. Ooh. So that's what I'm saying. Some of the boons are really Ooh, fucking good, and some of them are like, eh. Yeah. 
kind of like with beats, to be honest. Uh, yeah, Boon of Irresistible Offense, think about I like a lot. This moment of silence for what could have been the ending of Vox Machina Campaign 1 if oh, Scanlan had two ninth, ninth level, oh, the extra ninth level spot. Oh, shit. Moment of silence for what could have been. Damn. Without saying, because yeah, spoilers. True, but, oh. true. Holy fuck. Oh. Uh, Boon of Irresistible Offense I like a lot, because you can just bypass the damage resistances of any creature, so they never resist anything you do anymore, ever. Which doesn't, like, it's, it's just permanent, you just don't no longer That's have to it. take resistance in, into account. Uh, Boon of Perfect Health, you're immune to all diseases and poisons, and have advantage on constitution saving throws forever, so whatever con save you have to do, you always have advantage. Pretty good. Mm. Uh, Boon of Planar Travel, is a boon that all my bad guys are gonna have from now on, <laughs> uh, because it's just an escape. Oh, out of, it's escape uh, an escape out of jail free card. Um, so... When you gain this boon, choose a plane of existence other than the material plane. You can now use an action to cast plane shift with no spell components or spell slots required, targeting yourself only, and just travel there. Just a free plane shift. <laughs> you can just nope just, out. <laughs> nope out. Yeah. Uh, boon of quick casting is pretty interesting. You can choose one of your spells from first through third level with a casting time of an action and now make it so that that spell is forever a bonus action to cast which you know i can i can i can see i can see the benefits so that's basically the list goes on and on but that's basically some boons are really fucking good some of them are very mediocre mm -hmm. um, <laughs> surprise, surprise. the boon of recovery is pretty sick what does that do you can use a bonus action to regain a number of hit points equal to half your hit point maximum. Yeah, it's just Once a really big heal. Once you use this benefit, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. In addition, you succeed on every death saving throw that isn't a roll of one. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty good. <laughs> you, just, you just don't die. You just don't die. You're just immortal. Is that, is, immortal that, is that every death save? Or is that just like once as well? Or is it just, oh, you also only feel death saves when you roll ones? Until you finish a long rest, I guess, the way it's worded. I don't know. Well, it says, because it does, until you finish a long rest, in addition. Maybe it's like, if you go down so... once, all those death mm. saves, but then if you go down again, well, it's know. used up, and you have to long rest. Because it says, in addition, point. yeah. after they specify the after a long rest, so I feel like that might just be, oh, by the way, yeah. you also just get also free be, yeah. death saves forever. That's the way I interpret that, at least. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it, then the list goes on with like, oh, first and second level ranger, here's the spells we recommend. Third and fourth, you know, like that, that, that <laughs> shit. Uh, I don't really care for, it's just, you know, it's cool for new players if they don't really want to go through a spell list that consists of hundreds of spells. There you go, you know, have some recommendations. Um, uh, ranger subclasses, they go through the hunter one, which I'll also quickly uh, whip out the 5e version of it. So at third level, they get Hunter's Prey, which is called the same as it is in 5th edition. In 5th edition, uh, you just gain a feature of choice. So you can be Colossus Slayer, Giant Killer, Horde Breaker, and you basically have a certain benefit um, depending on the situation. So Colossus Slayer means that if you hit a creature with a weapon attack, it takes an extra D8 if it's below max HP uh, once per turn. Giant Killer is when a larger when a large or larger creature within five feet of you hits or misses you with an attack, you can use a reaction to immediately attack it back. And Horde Breaker is when you make a weapon attack, you can make another attack with the same weapon against a different creature that's within five feet of you. So if you have more than one enemy in your melee, you can just pop pop. Uh, and in one D and D, it is. When you hit a creature with a weapon or unarmed strike as part of your attack action on your turn, the weapon or unarmed strike deals an extra 1d8 damage if it's below max HP. So it's only... That's crazy. So basically they got rid of the other two and they just kept Colossus Slayer. They got rid of Giant Killer and Horde Breaker. That's whack. <laughs> That's whack. That's that whack. sucks. Boo, you whore. That sucks. Let people <laughs> choose, man. That sucks, dude. Dude, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't like that at all. Instead of giving you a choice of three, they just force you to go Colossus Slayer. That sucks. Give us choices. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. The con of simplifying the game further, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, that sucks, to man. make it simple, we remove your choice. No. Mm -hmm. 
when, yes. when, when has that ever historically worked out well? When has anyone ever said, oh, thank you. I appreciated less autonomy. Thanks. Yeah. yeah that, less this autonomy. Is really, um, I'm happy about that. This is, <laughs> this is literally why I'm considering when 1D&D &D comes out to kind of like just see what I like from 1D&D &D and replace, and just, uh, replace like, that. Yeah, with, I'm literally just yeah. going to make my own D&D 5.5 edition and it will just be handpicked yes. what I like. And then, but it's mostly going to be 5e. Yeah, with no, same. 100%. <laughs> 100% same. D&D 5.5. That's what we're calling it. <laughs> uh, normally, at 7th level is when normal hunters back in back in 5e would get their... Back in uh, the old days. Back in the old days. Would get their next uh, uh, little, little uh, class feature. Or subclass feature, sorry. Yeah. Which was defensive tactics. So, again, a choice of three. Escape the horde. Uh, opportunity attacks against you are made with disadvantage. Multi-attack defense. When a creature hits you with an attack, you gain a plus four bonus to AC against all subsequent attacks made by that creature for the rest of the turn. Steel will. You have advantage on saving throws against being frightened. Now, rangers or hunter rangers at sixth level get hunter's lore. Mm, you can call on the fancy. forces of nature to reveal certain strength and weaknesses of your prey. While the creature is marked by your hunter's mark, you know whether that creature has any immunities, resistance, or vulnerabilities. And if they have them, you know what they are. <laughs> Not complaining about that one, to be fair. But the choices. <laughs> yeah, but this is just a completely new thing. Like, they didn't give us yeah. only one of those three. They just scrapped it all and just give you... It's just one thing. One thing that's pretty fucking useful, I suppose. Um, a tenth level in 1D&D &D is when uh, hunter, hunter Rangers get their next class, subclass feature, which is multi-attack, which was this, is the same name as the one... 5e rangers get at uh, 11th level. Again, 5e gives you a choice. You either get volley, you could use an action to make a range attack against any number of creatures within 10 feet at a point you can see within your weapon's range. So basically, instead of having to pick one, you can just be like, oh, those three enemies are all within 10 feet of each other. I'm shooting all three with one action. It's pretty good. Uh, or whirlwind attack. Uh, it's for the more melee... Hunters, I guess. Uh, you can use an action to make a melee attack against any number of creatures within five feet of you. So you can just attack multiple enemies for the cost of one attack. Mm. Uh, whereas in 1D&D, &D, you now always have Conjure Barrage. Barrage? Prepared. It doesn't count against the number of spells you can prepare. You can cast the spell with first and second level spell slot. When you do so, the spell's damage is reduced by 1d8 for each slot below third. So you can basically... Cast Conjure Barrage, uh, you always have prepared, and it's normally a third level spell, but you can also choose to spell cast it at first, first and second level, just reducing damage 1d8 for each level. Mm. Oh, I guess. It's okay. It's cool, fine. I guess. <laughs> sure. Um, lastly, at 14th level, they get Superior Hunter's Defense, which is the same name as the 15th level ability hunters get in 5e you wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if i said that in 5e you get a choice of three things choice. Yep. Uh, whereas you get evasion stand against the tide or uncanny dodge and in 1d and d it's just when hit by an attack roll you use your reaction to half the damage so you're just gonna you get uncanny dodge and that's it it's like they heard oh, someone actually, say, I don't like making decisions, and just were like, That's It's uncanny a dodge idea. with a twist. Because you do the reaction to half the attack's damage against yourself. But that half of damage that you that half of damage that you don't take, you can redirect mm -hmm. it to another creature other than the attacker within five feet of your, yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's uncanny dodge with a twist. But again, they took away your choices. And that is it for the ranger. So I was really I was pretty satisfied with the changes to Bard. And Hunter, now that I'm done through reading this, I'm just like, they took away every choice and just forced you down one path with the Hunter archetype, yeah. and I don't like it. It yeah. feels like no. a lateral move, because in some ways it's better. Like, the choices they made aren't bad ones, but it just sucks that they took away the ability for you to kind of yeah. customize the class to your liking. And that's be yeah, fucking it's like, real. It, it's, it's better, it's just, like, all the same. Yeah, I'm not a fan, but let's be fucking real. No hunter is going to be more fun or better than the Tasha's hunter changes. So, you know, we don't need it. We don't need one. We, we, we got Tasha. Oh, did, they did they call it hunter now? Or is it... No, hunter is an archetype. It's, a, it's, an it's a Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. 
But, uh, you know, Tasha's ranger is way cooler anyway, so who needs one D&D &D anyway, dude? Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, that was it. Uh, next week, whoever the fuck will have on, but we'll be talking about Rogue. So that's the last one that they have published so far. So, so far, I'm a fan of one, not a fan of another. So it's it's one for one one in one right now. So hopefully they could still come out on top. They could come out on top with the, the last <laughs> expert class, as they call it. All right, with that nerdy, way too detailed stuff out of the way, we've got some <laughs> we've got some questions submitted through no way. the DS Discord. Uh, a lot of them by our very own Sassy Sunlight. Uh, first question for Belle and Laura. Uh, how does your character feel about the tension in the best friend relationship? You want to go mm. first? Sure. It's also hard because there's like, for example, a current thing causing tension, but it happened when I wasn't there. And from what I heard, like Ethan slash the group, you guys made all the right calls for probably like how Dagon would have base reacted, like the whole shark prank <laughs> thing. Um, so, but, but it's also hard because it's like, I don't know. Then it, for me, pick, it's like, how heavy do I lean into being annoyed? Because I still wasn't, like, there, there. And yeah. I, I haven't had time to rewatch the episode yet to see. I'm like, I don't want to go too hard into being mad and then later be like, that was an overreaction. I think I think I played that wrong, you know? Basically, it's at the point now where da Daigon's like, you know what? Cass is probably going to continue to do things that are going to bother me. But at the same time, it's more... She only blames Cass half of it. The other half, she's like, you know what? This is also on me. Because all these signs and, like, any... Like, for lack of a better word, like, red flags. Or all these elements of Cass's personality and behavior have been present the whole time we've been friends. The beginning, <laughs> she was just so wrapped up in, there's someone who's actually going to spend time with me. And, like, I have someone who can I can communicate with. That it's, like, you overlooked. It's kind of how, like, a lot of... This is, this is a very dark comparison but uh so for oh, example, no. someone someone who's like a victim maybe been a victim of abuse is more likely to then get into like negative relationships because they're just like their self-worth is down here so when someone treats them like at bare minimum they're like oh this is amazing this is wonderful and this is perfect That's so, so because sad. <laughs> <laughs> so just from, from lack of previous relationships it's like oh the beginning was great and basically Dagon's kind of waking up to you know what Maybe, maybe this relationship wasn't completely equal or wasn't 100% fair. And I think I was maybe giving a lot more than I was getting. But at the same time, not to write out that at the end of the day, it's like still Kessa is someone who showed like kindness for lots of people wouldn't. There's still obviously lots of lovely redeeming things about her and why they're friends. So it's more just kind of right, towing that line between being like, oh my God, I'm so like annoyed, pissed off at how much of that is like, how much of that is just Kess and how much of that do you just need to accept and figure it out and like move on with your life. And how much of it is, okay, no, we actually need to, like, be mad and hold the, some degree of accountable for this kind of thing. So, it's very back and forth. It depends on the day. Like, it it depends on how Daggett feels when she wakes up that morning, what it is. But it's still <laughs> net good, and it's still, like, a relationship she values and wants to keep. It's just one that she's realizing she was she was very much on a different page than Kes for a lot of it. And they're now trying to figure out to get on the same page. I have an idea, Laura. I'm going to conjure up an NPC that's, that's going to force become Daigon's new BFF to make Kes jealous. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? Do it. Do it. Well, you're going to be like, I'm going to like make a shrink NPC. <laughs> I'm gonna make an CG for our campaign for... just so you can be therapized. <laughs> Therapy session for the entire party. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, how does, uh, Belle, how do you look at, uh... So, for Cass, she really hasn't noticed any tension. <laughs> Fair. Fair. <laughs> Which, you know, is probably the most Cass thing ever. Yeah. But, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it kind of links up to, like, other stuff that's happening, and, like, I think Ethan asked a question that kind of relates to it as well, that I'll talk about later. But she's not dealing well right now <laughs> very like, much ignore all my problems because i'm not prepared to handle them so yeah. in a box in a box we yeah. go <laughs> so she's kind of she's very self-destructive right now Dude, that's a thing i'm gonna interject real quick that's everybody <laughs> in this party it I, is i the, the <laughs> all the characters that i have basically subjected to some form of trauma everyone all, was like like Elazarin. Guess I'll buy. Elazarin. 
doesn't want to deal with it, wants to forget about it, just, is, is and just spiraling. has periodic breakdowns and then forgets he has Cass, a breakdown. Same it's shit. Like, it's fine. <laughs> Jax had a fucking meltdown and realized gods are real after all, which is very traumatizing oh, yeah. to Jax because like his entire world is now, you know, his life was a lie. Like the entire party is the exact it's same just, when it comes to that it's, shit. It's, it's it, we all have the same coping me coping mechanism, which well, is not coping at all. It. That's your coping. <laughs> yeah, which is not the entire party's coping mechanism is not coping at all. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't exist. <laughs> I never happened. Need, we I do need a fucking therapy about. session, dude. Fuck it. <laughs> doing it. <laughs> We're doing it. NPC therapy. No, you know what you should do? You can I give you permission to tweak the NPC that Ethan and I made, the the unloved robot, turn him into a therapist. Immediately take God. it back. So I'm like, wait a minute, that's just fucking FCG from campaign three right now. The robot there. No, I take oh, it back. True, I'll do it. Mind. We'll look like we're copying. <laughs> God, that's fucking oh, man. ridiculous. Oh. You guys are all she, really bad. She hasn't noticed. You guys all suck. Yeah, because yeah, I even noticed, back. like, even uh, there are only, like, <clears throat> Daigon made one comment about the, like, that was not a prank. That was a shitty-ass thing to do. Last session, like, didn't talk about it, didn't really, other than, like, stormed away when it happened, just because, like, I'm wet and I'm mad and this was stupid. Um, But didn't bother then talking about it, but then it just came out when, like, you're talking about other pranks. And I was like, you know what? Just as long as it doesn't end and, you know, you could be mortally wounded. It's a bad prank. And that was it. And, like, um, Kai got it. But whoever else was there was like, oh, and, like, God, that was a point of comment. And Kess just right over her mm -hmm. head. Might no as idea. well have been Drax. Completely, of the galaxy. completely well, oblivious. Didn't even realize that that she, comment was meant She at her. has no concept of subtlety, especially, like, passive aggression aimed at her. Yeah. And I'll be honest, Belle, mm. I think that would be a really good character development for for Kess to oh. like learn right learn how to be passive I'm, think, I'm like trying to think of like like what <laughs> would finally be the thing the catalyst for her to realize oh fuck and i'm struggling man <laughs> you know what i think it is, is a, but it's is not a, a good one conundrum yeah the, the, the catalyst the catalyst has to be something like like your like Kess's dad dying it has to be something that is very permanent and very dramatic cuz everything else she's very easy to repress or shrug off or be like It'll get figured out, or people will figure it out for me. It needs to be something that's like, no, this isn't something that you figure out. This I is mean, just listen. Guess, to you. guess his dad is, like, is is a ticking time bomb anyway, right? So exactly, because that's what I mean. He's already it's, and she's and she's choosing not to deal with it. She's like, we True. we could maybe try and talk this out, fix it, or cure his illness. But like, ah, uh, I'm just gonna presume it'll be fine. No, I mean, because they keep going. said like fucking blue is yeah. doing well, some yeah. research for her, but yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Man. But yeah, this was very like passing the buck. Like Kess could maybe try and do that research. Kess could convince the party. Can we also maybe like while we're doing this, but like keep an eye out for maybe yeah, like Yeah, but the thing is, the thing that makes it difficult though like, yeah. is because Kess knows the only place that that supposed cure would be is on the plane True. of air. And that's not somewhere where you just kind of like really, really go to. <laughs> you which, just go. <laughs> which is yeah. why Blue is doing it for her, right? Yeah. I'm sure that once Blue reports back to Kessim, was like, hey, found some shit, uh, but I'm, uh, <laughs> I can't do it alone or whatever. And that's when that's when the yeah, that's party when travels doing, to yeah. the elemental plane of air arc begins. You know what I mean? Like Blue gets you all there Woo! and you guys vibe. But um, dude, I have like a list, right? <laughs> in my phone, in my notes. Let me actually grab it here. Of all the various plot points that could be, because <laughs> yeah. there's many. <laughs> so I kind of, I wrote down all the plot points just to have like an idea and like kind of in order that I want to do them in. And yeah. like after this pirate arc, there is one, two, three, four, five, okay. six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, just waiting, like already there. Just oh good, waiting. yeah, 12, no just, just waiting. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, you know, that's cool, I guess. I'm a lot Yay. more like w with the first campaign, the difference between first campaign and this campaign is that I, I due to the fact that I give you a lot more plot hooks early on and let you guys figure out whatever order you want to do them in. Hmm. I kind of future-proofed the campaign a little yeah. bit. because so I'm like, oh, well, I already gave him the handle. To... Whereas previous campaign, I very much did introduce one thing after another. Now I just introduce yeah. you to all the shit at the same time and you guys can figure out whatever the fuck you want to do first or next. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so I have a general idea. Some things I will kind of force down your throat, like things that are time sensitive and stuff. But other than that, like, yeah. you know. Mm. Like, it's like with that fucking, it's like with the, you both know about this because, uh, you know, uh, it's part of your um, session zero. The whole Stroud stuff, you can do, you can, yeah. you can choose to follow up on that whenever the fuck nope. you feel like it's time. Nope. Nope. I'm good. Until the point that I'm like, okay, now it's time. 
<laughs> but you could also you could also trigger that shit way earlier if you really mm-hmm. wanted to. You know what I mean? Like I have like a set like oh this is about the time that I would do it, and if yeah. it hasn't been triggered by then, I'll probably trigger it for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. We already moved up your timeline once for that, and I'm like I'm good. <laughs> I'm good now. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm already good now. I feel go. too low level for this. <laughs> <laughs> good. You should because it's, it's <laughs> brutal. It's brutal. Because actually, quick question for you then. Say we did do that and we're like, you know what? We're just going to pick this thing that was thrown out earlier and go for it. If it's something that you intended to be like, I don't think you're prepared for that. Would you lean more towards the side of fine, fuck it. Like I'll nerf this because I want to do it now and I'll make it doable. Or would you be like, no, this is a consequence of you picking a fight that was above your like station and you should have known that. And it I was would for try later. to find a healthy balance. Yeah, uh, I would nerf it to a point where it's not impossible. But, but it would be hard. It would be <laughs> really difficult. And to the point where, like, if you decide maybe we shouldn't do this yet, that is a valid choice. But if you really wanted to, there are ways for you to do it. It's just going to be very yeah. fucking challenging. Cool. Yeah. So I would try to find, like, a healthy balance there. Yeah. Uh, which I try to do for most of the stuff. I never want to... Uh, I lie. Um, there's definitely things where I'm like, yeah, I mean, if you guys decide to do that now, you're all fucking dead. Uh, because, but I, that's what I'm talking about, like, end campaign shit, right? Like, yeah. like if you decide, hey, dude, we're gonna just fucking fight, uh, Estisha. <laughs> you know? You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna get into a fight, and then four of you are gonna go down in the first thing, and then I'm gonna give you a get out of jail free card if you wanna use it and get the fuck out now. Yeah. Um, you know? Stuff like that. But, majority of the things, I'll, I'll basically be like... It's doable, but oh boy, they have to roll out of their fucking minds, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, you know, I mean, happens. Or come up with some real clever shit that yeah, you could exactly. never have seen coming. Or impress me as a DM very much, you know? That's also yeah. that's also a way to win D&D with me, is like, oh, just impress me. <laughs> Got a couple more questions for Laura from Sassy. Uh, first one is, what's Dagon's opinion on Brooks and Jax? Does she trust them? What's well, so funny, because... Um, well, Brooks in character and out of character is pretty much the same. In character and out of character for Jax is very different. Because out of character, Laura is still really fucking mad about the dragon egg and I'm not letting it go. <laughs> oh, and you're not never letting gonna know. It go. That's beautiful, right? <laughs> None of you ever gonna know in character. Like, that's literally I know, one of those I things that like, nobody's ever gonna know. So bad. It makes me so bad. Because in character, um, because like Jax is basically if if you had to put like a pecking order in the party of like you know everyone's down and what order do you give healing potions to or if someone asks you to go with them like who would you likely Jax is probably up there second after Kess because um he 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 was the first he saved her life in session one like when before they even knew each other so that's a pretty big deal um. She finds the artificer stuff fascinating, and he's shown that he's willing to, like, he's not, like, secretive about the knowledge. He's very open to sharing it. And um, Daigon also, both for just she's innately curious, but also she's, like, a hoarder of knowledge and skills. Because although it was, like, the more useful I can make myself, the more likely I will to, like, fit in somewhere. So the idea of acquiring more knowledge and more skills and being taught that is very interesting to her and very intriguing. And she believes him, the whole dragon egg thing, because she stuck her neck out on the line and was like, I think he made the right decision and vouched for him, like, to the group kind of thing. So in character, Daigon still um, has a pretty high opinion of Jax. And also, he's told us a lot. Like, in my notes of what I know about the characters, I have a fairly decent amount of notes on Jax. So I also don't feel like he's being too shifty. Dude, um, oh my god, Jack's fucking trauma dumped uh, with Vera, like when everyone was deafened, and I'm like, oh, dude. I know, and we don't. Oh, you're, you're what it is. And it's making me upset. I'm so excited for like the party to find out because it's actually like yeah. Jack's bat, bat backstory is tragic, man. It's yeah. tragic. Yeah. It's really sad. It's really sad. Yeah, Bro- Brooks <laughs> is very confusing because he again he's one of the ones who's made the most visible effort to like include um Daigon or like form a relationship he also she thinks he and Kess are some of the other two that are like closer at least do a lot more talking uh in the group so it's also like well if you're gonna be friends with my bestie then we should probably be friends kind of thing um but also feels like 
there's some things he's also very shady about. Um, <clears throat> just, I don't know. Feels, and of course, like the whole thing, and they're, they're friendly, friendly sparring, also bitter, because she's like, I still feel like I should have won every single one of those fights, and she's annoyed that she hasn't. Well, I'll give you um, a spoiler. You're going you're gonna to get a chance to redo, because on the way back, there's going to be another fight night in the, in the ship yeah. in Porcupine. So you guys, you guys need to redo. Yeah. Yeah, so either way, yeah, it's, redo. it's a bit more, it's a bit more fluid than the her and Jax one. Her and Jax, it's not so far if she's like, Jax is up on like a pedestal or anything, but Jax, she's just firmly like, no, nah, I think he's a good dude. Like a bit weird, a bit weird. And has, you know, it's has some dark old, shit man. in his past, but as do we all, but at least he's kind of open with the dark shit. At least we'll open, she thinks he's been open with the dark shit. So, well, um, kind of quirky old man, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. Probably closer of the two, closer to Jax than to Brooks, but doesn't have a bad relationship with either. Also, with the Brooks, the whole the grenade thing and his comments. Also, it's like I don't know if I want to get close to you because you're an idiot who like might off yourself at some time. So maybe accidents. let's not get too close to that one. Yeah, <laughs> won't have to mourn them if you don't care about them, right? That's true. <laughs> uh, uh, the wording Sassy used for this question is, did you expect Kess and Daigon's friendship to fall apart when you started the campaign? I don't think it's falling apart, but it's definitely taking some it's hits. It's not, yeah. Um, uh, what I didn't expect was I didn't even, like, out of character, didn't even really think about until other people in the party pointed out how very one-sided it was, I guess, or how, I guess, <laughs> Daigon, did, Daigon did put Kess on a pedestal very much and very much just blatantly ignored a lot of the other like these things that are now showing up and now there's other because it was just you're the only person yeah. that is not the sample size is bigger is now, and now time with me. yeah yeah exactly so now it's like now that i have more than one person to socially interact with it's like oh maybe i didn't maybe that wasn't like you know <laughs> maybe that's not normal. how friendships are maybe supposed that to wasn't. go <laughs> yeah you know and oh, isn't it crazy <laughs> that bell is a fake friend and then role plays a fake friend that's crazy dude <laughs> 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 Rude. So it's not falling apart because it's still it's one of those like you know when in real life you have those friends like even if something really serious happens in that relationship but they're like one of your oldest friends or they were they were still there for you at a time like that was a really low point in your life so it's like you could fuck up but you'd have to fuck up really hard to ever actually lose me as a friend that's kind of like kiss and Daigon right now it's like even if i'm pissed at you even if maybe we have like uh like we, we, even if we do a Ross and Rachel and go on a break at some point, but we're always going to probably Beanie, or like come back to each it, other. <laughs> just put it really well in chat. Ascension starved victim latches onto walking red flag that shows some basic level of care and affection. And I feel like it's all the dots. That is, that is just it is. It's very much like someone... You hit the nail on the fucking head there. Yeah. Someone, showed, someone was nice to me and they didn't <laughs> die, so I'm just going to Velcro cat. Fuck. <laughs> That's so accurate. Uh, for Belle... Hey! How connected does Kess feel to the party, and who does she trust the most? Kess definitely still trusts Daigon the most. Out of everyone. Um, well, I mean, she she can tell the least people your secrets. There's also just physically, she's easy to trust. Because very few right. people can she tell not, not anything anymore. to. Not anymore. Not anymore. She has the not fucking anymore. juice. She has the juice. Yeah. She got uh, the juice. It's the TikToks out here. <laughs> it's not corn, but... Yeah. She do but got the juice. In general, she's starting to feel quite disconnected from the rest of their group, like including Dagon. It's just like everyone in general. Um, because she's been called out repeatedly, and she's like, "I'm annoyed at all of I'm you." Not... <laughs> <laughs> no, she's just like she's had a lot of shit <laughs> just thrown at her really fast. It's crazy how she and can open up about just, that. That's crazy, bro. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, crazy. I know, but like, it's wow. just starting to hit her <clears throat> a little bit at the same time now that she's had a chance to kind of breathe and doesn't have anything else to like focus on with like traveling on a ship. And... Yeah. Just need some granddad. Gra Kess needs some grandpa time. Yeah. She's well, like, it's also I'm part sad. of like, <laughs> I think it's also part of why like, like Daigon could have gotten much more pissed off about the oh no my life is threatened prank um but then like if she thought th sits back and thinks about it she's like you know what I'm learning that <sighs> Kes doesn't act like it has trouble coping anything that, or like the anything that's difficult Kes doesn't just address anything that's hard <clears throat> and not in a fun way like very well so it's also like maybe you know what she's just looking to do anything to distract her right now from thinking about it or dealing with it and so it's like 
there was that introspection later. It was like, okay, you know what? I kind of get why, like, these behaviors are ramping up. So she's trying to also give her some leeway there. Because I'm assuming that's part of what it all is. Is yep. like, can't cope if you're too busy planning, like, stupid shit. So... <laughs> I mean, yeah, she's like... Cassie's an, like, Cassie's an intervention. Like, that ass needs an intervention. <laughs> yeah. She is totally isolating herself. Completely just withdrawing. Imagine um, isolating yourself on a boat where you can't... She, I know. The thing is, like, <laughs> she say, has a say the party does, like, you know, intervention, does an intervention for Cass. She can just be like, I don't want to listen to this. Pops into vessel. Pop. Oh, well, the thing is, no, she can still okay. hear. So she yeah, they can she, still I, just go... She can just talk at her oh, in the right, vessel. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Unless she goes in... Ashu's vessel, which yeah. is not a vessel, just a teleport. Yeah, true. Mm. It just teleports away. Uh, there's gonna be a point. Imagine where... someone walking into that scene, all of us just yelling, but very <laughs> emotional things, just yelling into like an inanimate object. And someone walks by and goes, "Are they okay? <laughs> you gotta stop withdrawing." <laughs> uh, dude, like the thing is, I can't wait for like two years from now, and we'll look back at like how fucking socially inept everyone was at doing yeah. anything but then two years from now there's gonna be like you know everyone has gone through shared trauma people have, have probably have died come back died come back to that point to the point where everybody knows everything about each other and now it's just kind of like yeah. oh look at look at us look 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 at us you know it's like it's like fucking um all right on hot ones yeah it's like Gifts. look at us <laughs> we're, we're here, here. who the thunk, <laughs> yeah. thunk. Not yeah, me. exactly Not me. uh questions for me oh my god uh, how are you? I'm okay, Sassy. Thanks for asking. Uh, no <laughs> are you have good? COVID. Have we have we broken you yet? Are you like? Do you regret everything yet? Mm, I hit that point like three years ago. So like at this point, <laughs> no, I'm good. No longer have COVID. I'm fucking busy as shit though. I'm stressed out and uh, I, you know, the existential crisis. But other than that, you know, we're vibing. Woo. Love me a good existential crisis. Uh, what did I like most about last session? Ooh. Ooh. The cake fork. <laughs> Chloe was breakdown about the cake fork. No. In game though, in in campaign. In game. Uh, <laughs> I. Uh, it's a good question, dude. It's a good question. Oh my god! I had imagine Dutch makes a really OP magical item in game, but it's the cake fork. It's a magical cake fork in the game. And it's just for <laughs> Elazar, because Elazar is the only person in the group that would ever know what a cake fork is, let alone have used one before. <laughs> oh my god. I want an OP <clears throat> item that just happened, to be like, and the enchanter is like, well, this was the nearest thing at the time, so I just put it in this. I, I want, I want Elazar's spiritual weapon to become a cake fork. <laughs> a big, gold cake fork. That's what um, I want. <laughs> what do I like most? I am really enjoying... Just the way Celestia is, man. When yeah, when Bell so and fun. when Bell and Duke made Celestia, they didn't give me like her character as in like how she the way she behaves. I was just, like base basing it on, on like that like backstory of like the Wanderlust having this like obsession with the star chart and kind of that mm -hmm. like Wanderlust. I just decided to make her very bubbly and um I love her. Up front doesn't really like because one thing that like I think it was Brooks that was really shocked about the fact that Celesti a few minutes earlier was like, I don't want to be a part of this. I'm I'm leaving. I'm ejecting myself out of the situation. Then like, five minutes later came back and just talked to Brooks like nothing ever happened. And he was like, yeah. wait, people do oh. that. You know what I mean? People people can walk out of Not everything has to be traumatic. Yeah, right? Exactly. Wait, you You can just you can just leave. <laughs> you can just leave? Uh, that was really fucking funny. Just you can set a boundary uh, like that? You yeah, know? that's crazy. That? that really tickled me. <laughs> and uh, just, just shit like that where Celesti just has... She's been on uh, alone a lot, but she's also traveled with groups, you know, with the, with the pirate ship crew and, and all that shit. So she she's used to some level of bullshittery, but is also very good at just saying, hey, that's... I'm good. I'm, I'm a dip. I'm gonna go for a swim and come back later. Um, and just like kind of like role-playing that. I don't know. I enjoy a lot. I, uh, I I I enjoy that a lot. Uh, what's your favorite NPC so far? It's like choosing a favorite child, man. Uh, I love the wacky. I love the wacky NPCs. The the fucking wacky NPCs that show up for like one or two sessions and then never show up again. So like this campaign, that fucking wacky shopkeep that sent you guys to fucking look at who the fuck was robbing his warehouse. Yes. 
The like one we were, that we were sure was a werewolf stealing from his own shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like those types of NPCs I fucking love. Like those NPCs that just like show up once or twice, have a fucking out there wacky personality, and then never show up again. That's the type of NPCs I really fucking enjoy. Um, the triplets, the triplets are fun. Yeah, true. Uh, I also really enjoy... Fucking what's her name? Uh, a little pleasure from uh, you know the. I was gonna say she's the, my favorite. I, think, I really yeah. enjoy playing her as well because bitch has no boundaries and will literally and, and just calls everyone on their shit. Yeah, it's like, exactly. Oh, yeah, doesn't doesn't give a shit. <laughs> uh, I really enjoy role playing pleasure as well. I'm sure um, a lot of people enjoy role playing pleasure. It's pretty mm -hmm. role pretty playing with. <laughs> I mean, I would. Let's be fucking real. If I would, <laughs> come on now, come on, come on now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I guess that that would be my top picks of the campaign so far. As far as like longer lasting characters, like NPCs that have shown up a lot, I I do like General Kron. I feel like General Kron mm -hmm. is a very de is very detailed. When I when I created her, she was very basic, but over the course of the campaign, she's become very like a lot of layers and a lot of like actual character and 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 trauma and issues and you know the whole expose that she was like in with the night webs but not by choice and and stuff like that like i enjoy general crown a lot she's she's grown on me a lot um we've also got some questions submitted to us by bine uh for everyone do you own a cake fork no I, do I didn't even know such a thing existed. I, I, we, have, we have small little forks over here that people use that are typically used for like desserts and stuff. But I looked up what a cake fork was, and basically a cake fork are either three or four pronged. But if it's a three pronged, it has like a very wide one prong and two smaller top ones. What's uh, the point? What's the design? What makes it a yeah, cake my, fork? I, I've used them because my grandparents have them. Mm -hmm. but like, how um, are they any more suited for cake than a regular fork? Because you can like you can use the the broader to like cut through the cake because it's slightly sharper and that's literally yeah. it <laughs> you need a thing that's sharp to cut your cake bitch your cake's too dry fucking make a better cake no but it's also for like pastries and stuff right so like things <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are, you know it's not just okay. it, it's called a cake fork but it's 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 a pastry fork really i honestly thought this was um, like a meme until no, the bit kept going i was like no this is an actual thing <laughs> that we're uh, that koiba we have... is now i can show you hold on, hold on i can show you <laughs> just gonna go get a cake fork <laughs> wait it is <laughs> He has one. Hello. <laughs> See, a pastry fork sounds a bit more like a real thing. So at least it sounds a bit more multi-purpose yeah. than sure. a cake fork. A cake fork is so specific. <laughs> you know. I cannot show you. Uh, okay. I thought I had some here, but I don't. Uh, but they're basically like what we have is just like normal forks, but small. Yeah. For shit okay. like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um. Mm -mm 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 -mm. For Bell. Hey. I made this image way too small. How is Kes feeling about the whole may or may, or may not have a terminal illness vibe? Uh, she is not feeling not great feeling. about it. <laughs> She's just not feeling she about it at all. Cutting it off <laughs> and ignoring it entirely. She's like, Kes has always assumed she would live like a really long time. So now she's like very much facing. Mm, that might be uh, a lot shorter than you thought. I'm not basically immortal. <gasps> what the fuck? Based with your own mortality. So Dude, now just get your one D and D epic boon, and you'll be immune to any disease. Right. Fixed. Just or just become 20. like a level. Just become a high level monk or druid. You become immune to disease <laughs> and shit. Shit. I think druid. You def I definitely at some point, if we get high enough level, I get to become immune to poisons and disease as a monk. Because. Also druid. I think like level 20 druids stop aging Ooh. and become immune to disease. Like Keyleth is immune to yeah. disease. Yeah. Yeah, she's not doing it with it well dealing with it well, like at all. <laughs> That's she's crazy. very much Could have fooled me. I know, right? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> she's doing me. great. She's like oh, yeah, completely yeah, yeah. accepted it and moved on. No, yeah, she's, she's, she's just she's it, absolutely you know? isolating. She is starting to face the reality that she could die before the rest of the people in the group, which is not something she had ever thought. She always thought she would be the last one there. Uh, so now she's like, "Oh shit, I don't want to. I don't want to die first. <laughs> that sucks. No, no, thank you." It could have fooled me, Belle. That's I know, right? Crazy. Ah, she's um... so good at hiding it. 
Yeah, yeah, really good, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Never um, would have for Laura, mm -hmm. what does Daigen think about Brooks learning signing? And is there anything in particular she wants to teach him? Um, and does she intend to ask for something in return? So a three-part question. Uh, the initial reaction would have been very excited, but it was during um, a part away from the rest of the group, a deafened part. But this specific thing wasn't really part of the deafen. So I think it's fine to say because he then had he very quickly went for that book and like a book to learn signing and immediately Daigon's reaction was oh okay like you had a perfectly good potential teacher right here but you were looking for ways to like avoid interacting with me and you'd rather do it okay fine cool and was like kind of a bit upset because that would have been a really good chance and it, because also previous interactions kind of felt like Bro again, Brooks had been making an effort to, like, either just include Daigon in conversations, like that one time he asked her to, like, dance when they were drunk and shit, you know? And then that was, like, a 180 from previous behavior. So I was like, oh, okay. So he was just doing it to be polite and, like, because we're traveling together. and Because that would be a much more of a commitment to learn a whole language is, like, you know, lots of tutoring sessions and stuff like that. And th so in her mind, when he, like, because they have had some sessions... It was like, oh, because in even out of character, like looking at um, sign language and print resources, they have to use, of course, like arrows and pictures of like the first gesture, to the second gesture, like reading a book is going like this. I think in ASL, it's like the book and as like lines skimming down a page. Mm -hmm. Fall is this for like leaves falling and stuff like that. So the picture would be like picture one and then picture two with like an arrow. And those are simple. But some of them I was looking at and they're like, this is actually kind of confusing. I'm like, I from this picture don't quite understand and having someone to physically show you would make a lot more sense. And to me, it'd be a lot faster. And so Diagon also thinks similar, like I feel like it's easier to learn from a person than from a book. And she doesn't know that he's never used it yet. She doesn't know that all she knows it. And so she assumed that the one like time they had was again, politeness, like, you know, just kind of thing. Which she still appreciates, but I mean, it's not the multiple, same. There's been multiple occasions where, uh, like, for instance, last session when you were away, uh, yeah. Brooke spent some time with Daigon and, and yeah, Daigon and I was, him, yeah, and Daigon each time she him, like, she assumes it's again politeness or practicality. Like these are words that the book confused me on because the the pictographs were just a bit <laughs> obtuse compared to some. Um, I feel so, like this is always the case of it's really not that deep, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's not, it's not, she's, right, it's, it's not, she's completely reading more into it, but because God. she's always, her whole, her whole life is insecurity, right? And it started yeah, with yeah, appearance, yeah, but then that just pervades into other aspects of her personality. Mm -hmm. Um, and as for, she, she wouldn't ask for anything in return, because there isn't really anything she wants. Plus, Brooks, technically, Brooks gave her a gift first. Because Brooks gave her the Meerkat plushie way back True. when. And that's like the first gift she ever got from anyone. So it's yeah, also Kes, like... Bitch. There doesn't need to be we a... We've already told thing. that Kes is not a good friend. We have well, so Kes doesn't understand things. birthdays. So she doesn't like, understand oh, birthdays. That's such a so call, call dude. Oh, what's a birthday, guys? Fuck off. <laughs> well, that one Daigon doesn't mind. Because it was clear... That this was a thing. What's it was Christmas? also clear because like Kes never told me her birthday. So it's also like I that that one I don't Daigon doesn't see as a slight because it's like clearly this is just not a thing that you care about. No, I'm just so, giving okay. Bell shit because I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, Ethan. And the Meerkat was really it was like yeah, session the, two or at something. The fair, it was right? real at early. The, yeah, it was the like fair, yeah. really early. Yeah, yeah. The so festival. there was three parts of the question was what does he think? Is anything is in anything return? In Have I missed that, anything? Is there anything in particular that Daigon wants to teach him? I don't think there's anything in particular, like specific words. There's more like, I'm yes. sure there's probably some things she wouldn't want to teach because then she could have secret, more, still some semi-secret conversations with guests. And, and like she, the the one book. thing she'll be sad to lose. Yeah, he gets out the book. He's like, wait a minute. Um, I do think it'd be, ironically, she does kind of hope he wants to learn the lewd words, but not because she's interested Penis. in like flirting with Brooks, Penis. but because... Daigon has a very lewd sense of humor, even though she's, you know, never done that with anyone. And we'll a lot of she like she like like her thing, she loves to make like jokes. Like like she's made a lot of jokes at Davian's expense so far about like Davian and Celestia or whatever. And only Cass understands them. She's like, it'd be nice if someone else understood my jokes, because I think I'm funny. So maybe that. Vagina. <laughs> yeah, so just teach him those things. <laughs> Sex funny. But she also would never bring it up because she doesn't want Brooks to get the wrong idea. Taint. 
Um. <laughs> but she also would never want to t- like, okay, hey, Brooks, I want to teach you these words because she's worried Brooks would think it's flirting and Brooks Minge. would think it's because she's interested. And she's like, no, 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 not what I meant. Hold on. <laughs> Threesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's an important one. Orgy. Now I can just point to like Brooks pleasure at one more person, then just do the sign. I used to know the ASL sign for threesome because one night in college, Hot a bunch of my friends and I sex. got really drunk and learned a lot of sexual things in ASL because someone was taking an ASL course as their elective. <laughs> I think I remember. I'm pretty sure this is the sign for butt sex. That's all I remember. What? This is the <laughs> sign for butt sex in nice, ASL. Dude. I think. Nice. I think. Before butt anyone sex. in the comments sees this and knows ASL and is like, no, <laughs> we were drunk. That's the only one I remember. tickling. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'll think I'll think I'll think I'll uh, think I'll do. Um, for me, as we get deeper into the Vera vibe, I hate that, that wording, that phrasing. <laughs> uh, if we or get Vera. the Trident, are we going to see more of Elson's influence? No. Elsinol is very picky about who she reveals herself to, and so far only does it to people that are part of her clique. So only the people on the inside will see more of her. The rest of the party, no. You don't have to you? answer, Dutch, but like I'm assuming when when Jack was like, anyone you know about this whole blood oath thing, I immediately was like messaging um, Belle and Ethan because I think I know what it is, but I don't. I'm, I'm assuming it's related to. Our whole, our whole thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. whole thing. It is, it is, it is, it is. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. So I was like, I made me the message. Bell I was like, do you think, do you think he means this? And she's like, yeah, I think that could be it. And Jackson insight check a single one of us. <laughs> no. True. 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 The thing yeah. about Elsinil is, fair, we didn't like, show any reaction. We were just like, out nah. of character, yeah. everyone is aware of Elsinil because of last campaign, and she was very, yeah. very much never serious, always fucking around. Now, she still fucks around, but she's definitely, because she's now a, a deity, uh, a demigod, technically, um, it's gotten a little more, well, a lot more powerful and a little more, like, she has a responsibility now, so she became a, she, she became a little more serious, but still loves to fuck around, because it's who she is, but just yeah. only at times where it's appropriate and with people that she knows have no option of telling it to anyone else or showing it to anyone else. Only people on the inside, really. <clears throat> uh, Vera was a uh, NPC from Jax's backstory. Yeah. Vera was in Jax's backstory, so that's that's where that's where she came from. Well, Toko really only gave me what she looked like, and that she and was her role that in she was life. Jax's captain when he was a pirate. I decided what kind of everything else. personality, <laughs> but yeah. Um, <clears throat> I just threw up everywhere. Oh. So my English, but go to bed. What the fuck, Sassy? Well, feel better. First, but then go to bed. Look after yourself, please, Sassy. Jesus. Especially given you know current events. Please look after yourself. Stop vomiting. Go to bed. Stop vomiting. Go to bed right now. <laughs> um, that one long constitution. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions for me, or does Chad have any questions for me? Now that we're uh, now that we're here, any anything? Um, I I asked mine. It was just about the, previous sessions that you were like confirmation oh, about Vera. What if this or what was that or uh, blah, 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 anything? Um, how 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 much at risk am I of being dying next session when I'm not even here to experience my own death? <laughs> <laughs> the, the usual like ten percent. <laughs> as much risk as anyone else's is dying. Cool. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Times two, because you won't be there. They'll be emotionally impacted. Uh, yeah, you probably have less chance because I don't want to kill someone when their player isn't here. Like, where's the fun mm, in that? Yeah. Is the bitch queen a baddie? She, mm, she typically only kind of looks like the way she shows herself to the material plane is mainly oh. just like some elemental water wave form with the face. Is she hot? Important question. All Not villains really. need to be hot. Not really. Well, fuck. She's like a gross. Well, I Loki kind of imagine her as. <laughs> She's like a gross. She's all gross. <laughs> well, uh, okay, I Loki kind of envision her as as Ajara from World of Warcraft, which I'll uh, yeah. is Queen, Queen Ajara, like like a Naga type vibe, but that's not what she looks oh, like okay. at all. She like is a face, but mainly made of water when she presents herself. Oh, okay. Um, but like I kind of uh, imagine her as 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 as, as a ja- queen of Jara from World of Warcraft. Um, 
Honestly, I think... Zara was a hottie before the whole Naga thing? Yeah, it's crazy how an elf was hot and suddenly she turns to a fucking fish bitch. And she becomes... Yeah, yeah, and somehow still kind of bad. Not going... Mm, if you're into that sort now, of thing. Now, Sassy, that question, would Jax have kids? Do you mean, like, would he be open to as, like, an old man still trying to have? Or do you mean, does he have kids from his past life that we just don't know about? Because he he's told us he had a wife. So, mm. like, there could have been. Jesus there could be baby bad. Jaxes running around somewhere. And we just don't know. Or they could have died along with the wifey. Which is even sadder. <laughs> I'm going to know. just not say anything. Yeah, because that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why he, he secretly stole a dragon. He never admitted it, but it's the paternal, I didn't have kids and this dragon is now my child. Baby Jax and baby dragon eggs. Wouldn't baby dragon eggs just be dragon eggs? Think about it. Ethan, think about it. <laughs> just really think about that one. I feel like baby dragon eggs would just be dragon eggs, no? It's an oxymoron. No. <laughs> the moron being Ethan. Um... <laughs> Kidding. Kidding. I'm kidding. It's a joke. God. Um, well, shit. If you guys don't have any questions for me, uh, and Chad doesn't have any more questions for me. It's actually a branded candy sold only in Sigalia. Like Kinder Eggs. Big up Sigalia. Nice collectible baby figurines inside. But illegal, outside, illegal outside of Sigalia because other fucking provinces <laughs> just for some yeah. reason the kids choked on the toys and they outlawed them because they're fucking idiots no more. um isn't that why they're like illegal in america is because yeah, yeah, yeah because parents are too dumb, dumb to watch their kids and then kids are just inherently dumb and want to put shit in their mouths and so Maybe the like kids are like choking the on the toys well. fucking pog chocolate dude pretty good um, they're not illegal in canada because canadians are smart enough we can <laughs> still have kinder eggs <laughs> congratulations that's, I mean, the honestly, that's a, that's a feat. Yay. Yeah. You have passed the speaking of test. chocolate, right? So you guys, speaking of kinder, um, do you have buenos over there? Kinder yeah. bueno, like the little... But you need to... Okay, pro tip for me, stick one in the freezer overnight and then eat it. Mm. Because, like, the cream Ooh. becomes all ice creamy inside instead of just, like, gooey. It's, like, ice creamy. It's fucking... Ooh. Oh, my God, dude. Try that. That oh sounds good. Oh, my God, dude. Like, the key <laughs> is to have it frozen to the point where, like, it's ice cream inside and not just hard. So uh, overnight would probably do the trick, but like, oh my god, it's so fucking good. Um, it's so good. Um, true, we are still raising money for charity. Uh, so if you guys want to have a look at that, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we'll be streaming up until November 15th for, for all kinds of charity stuff. We're running out charity one shots uh, at the end, of, towards the end of the... Uh, charity campaign as well on this channel. Uh, there's a lot of lot of chance for you guys to still uh, chip in Lots of for charity. D and D related incentives. If you're yeah. obviously yeah, 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 you yeah. like D and D, if you're here, so absolutely. Uh, with that said, though, this has been Dungeon Discourse. You know, we've been yapping for about an hour and a half, uh, which is typically the sweet spot. Anywhere between an hour and an hour and thirty minutes is what I'm kind of like. Yeah, this is good. Um, thanks for being here, ladies. Appreciate yous. Um. We'll be here on Sunday for the next session of uh, Dungeon I Select. Will. Except uh, Laura won't be here, but she'll be with us in Big spirit uh, while she's Canada. celebrating whatever fucking Canadian made up holiday it is that she's celebrating. Um, <laughs> oh, Chandler, I'm in her SoCo right there, my bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fuck. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. See you Sunday. Uh, is anyone live for us to do a little do a little, little raid? I just had a thought. Oh man, if if Brooks does learn inappropriate words like lewd words of sign language, just to try to fuck with him, we could be having a serious conversation out of nowhere in the group and diving into just sign like tits to Brooks and just see if he laughs or something. Just sign like <laughs> vagina and just see if Brooks Booba. does anything. <laughs> <laughs> just try and break each other like it'll be a game and the group be like what are you doing nothing <laughs> I was itchy <laughs> uh, is there any level select gamers live right now I don't think so I don't know I don't think so but um, oh well we're just gonna fucking fuck off then really uh, I was thanks. gonna be but I'm not allowed to stream anymore today so the yeah. plans have been hijacked oh my god poor have you fun. Oh my god. I had to go get my nails did I had to get my makeup did oh my god it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> Suffering from success. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take care, everybody. Take care. Brush your hair, and I'll catch you guys on Sunday. We all will, except for Laura, because Laura sucks. Except for me. Bye -bye. I'll be there in spirit in the chat. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Du -du -du -dum.
bom 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 bom